This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day like this. We thank you, Lord, because you are promising your word that we crown the year with goodness for us. And we believe you because your promises, they are yes and they are amen in Christ Jesus. And Father, this morning we'll open our heart to receive your word. I pray, Lord, that every heart and every mind be receptive. Lord, let there be understanding, even as your word come forth, Father. Let your spirit guide everyone into all truth, just as you have promised. We we receive your word with joy, with excitement, and with faith in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. I wanted to say a big amen. amen. Glory be to God. All right. I started a series that I call The Lifestyle of Overcomers. All right. So this is the conclusion of that. This is part two. All right. So uh, it's a very short series, just one and two. The Lifestyle of Overcomer, part two. All right. Now, one of the uh, things that uh, we establish from God's war is that if you are a Christian, a child of God, born again, you are born again as an overcomer. Let's say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. So in Christ Jesus, now listen to this, it does not matter what your experience has been before, it does not matter what you have been struggling with, with before, it does not matter what has overcome you before, but listen to this, the moment you experience the new birth, the moment you welcome Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the moment you become a new creation, things change for you. Do you get what I'm talking about? Your spiritual position change. Your spiritual status change. Your condition change. Are you listening to me now? Now, now listen to me. This is very important for you to understand. Now, your body may not change. Are you with me? Now, now your soul may not change. Your emotions, your feelings may not change. But in your spirit, you are a new person. You are a new creation. You are changed. And you have become one spirit with Christ. Now look at what the scriptures say. The book of 1 John chapter 5. Now we'll look at this but I just want to uh, 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 remind you, refresh you. Let's do a quick recap of things that we learn in part 1. First John chapter 5 4 and 5. So in Christ Jesus you have a new name. In Christ Jesus you have a new nature. In Christ Jesus you have a new identity. In Christ Jesus you have a new destiny. Let's say I have a new name. I have a new name. Oh, of course you can do better than that. Let's say I have a new name. I have a new identity. I have, a I have a new destiny in Christ, in Christ Jesus. All right, so what is your new name? What's your new identity? Uh, 1 John 5, 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. We see who overcome the world, but he will believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Then the Bible says you are overcomer. You are overcomer. To overcome in Greek, as I told you, is nikao. It means to conquer, to prevail to subdue, to get the victory. So in Christ Jesus you conquer, you prevail. It doesn't matter what comes against you. In Christ Jesus you need to know you have the potential, you have the ability to prevail, to overcome, to subdue them. The Bible says Romans 8, 37, Paul say, yet in all these things we are more than conqueror. Let's not say more than conqueror. More than conqueror. That is who you are now in Christ Jesus. That is your identity. Now listen to this. It is important for you to be secure in your new identity, in your new destiny in Christ Jesus. So it is my destiny to overcome. Are you with me? I am programmed to overcome. It doesn't matter how big the challenges are, how many, how very, I have been programmed to overcome as a new creation, as a child of God. I am more than conqueror. It doesn't matter how many things the devil bring up against me. Now listen to this. God has equipped me to overcome. I need to be secure in that. Do you know what I'm talking about? You need to know that and to be 
sure of that. There is nothing that come against you that you cannot overcome. Do you get what I'm talking about? Are you with me? So you are more than conqueror through Christ that loves you. First John chapter 4 verse 4. These are scripture that uh, we look at and lay foundation with. Now, it says, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is what? Greater than he who is in the world. You have overcome them. It doesn't matter how many are your adversary, how many enemies line up against them. In Christ Jesus, you have already what? Overcome them. Let some say, I've overcome them already. First Corinthians chapter 15. 15 verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Can I pay attention? First Corinthians 15 57. So victory is a gift from God. That's what I say, a gift from God. Yes. Now pay attention. This is very important. Now, so I need to know that my victory, the victory that I have, is not the one that I work for. Alright? It's a gift from God. All God wants is that you receive it by faith. Amen. Now Christ overcame for us, Christ fought the battles for us, Christ fought the devil for us, and he overcame. And because we are now children of God, we are joined here with Christ, everything that Christ has now belongs to us. So the victory of Christ is now your victory. The victory of Christ is now my victory. Let's just say the victory of Jesus is my victory. So if Christ has overcome, you also, you have what? You have overcome. Do you get what I'm talking about? Now, that's what we are talking about, that you are an overcomer already in Christ Jesus. Because you believe in him who has overcome, who has overcome. And because he shares with you everything that he has, including his victory, including his authority. Glory be to God. And do you know something? What we are learning, now, now listen to it. Is how to experience in reality in every day of our life the victory that Christ has already won for us. Amen. Let's not say Christ has won the victory for me. Victory. I will experience it. Now, now listen to it. Say, Pastor, all right. You say Christ has won the victory for me, but all my life I've been struggling. I, I have a lot of things that I'm battling with, a lot of things that are overcome me. Now, that is why we are learning the word of God. That is why the church is a learning place, a place of truth for you to learn the truth. And now listen to this. It starts with you understanding that in Christ Jesus, you are not a captive, you are not a victim anymore. In Christ Jesus, you are not a failure anymore. In Christ Jesus, you have a new idea identity. You have a new status. You have a new position. Do you get what I'm talking about? And so it starts with you seeing yourself as an overcomer because you are now like Christ Jesus. He's your identity. Christ is our identity. All right? As he is, so we are now. Do you get what I'm talking about? Everything that is true about Christ is true about those who believe in Christ. Amen. Do you believe in Christ? Yes. Amen. Okay, so everything that is true of Christ is true of you. He overcame the devil, you also you have overcome. So you are an overcomer. Now listen to it. But in everyday life, when challenges come, when the enemies spring up against you, when there is a battle against you, when you have a lot of things that comes against you, when you have a lot of addiction, things you need to break away from, habits that you want to stop, how do you now bring the victory that Christ has given to you to become a personal reality? in your life. That's what I'm talking about. So it's not just to know that oh, Christ has won for me. Christ has given me the victory. I'm more than conqueror in Christ. I'm an overcomer in Christ. And then you only know that in words and then you are not experiencing it. No, you ought to experience it in everyday life. You get it? Amen. Are you following me? Amen. All right. Now, so how do you experience victory that is yours, that is your battery, that is a gift of God to you. I told you victory is a gift from God. Do you get it? The Bible says we have the victory. You see the scripture, but thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is through his death and resurrection that we have the victory, alright? But how do we experience it in everyday life, alright? And I said the way to experience it is to develop the life lifestyle of an overcomer. Alright? So there is a way to live, to enjoy the victory that Christ won for you. Do you get it? 
Now, that's exactly what we have been looking at, the lifestyle of overcomer. Now, how do I begin to live, all right? What are the habits that I need to cultivate? What are the things that I need to begin to do, all right? Uh, which way do I need to begin to think or carry myself so that the victory that Christ won for me will not just be a spiritual victory, but it will be a reality, a natural, physical reality in my life. And uh, last time in part one, we said one of the things you need to do, the, the lifestyle of an overcomer is that overcomer live by the word of God. They live on the word of God. So I want to experience in every day of my life, in every situation, circumstance, the victory that Christ has won for me, then you need to live by the word of God. You need to live on the word of God. What well, that means that you need to know what the word of God says about you. And don't forget, everything the world says about Christ, it says about you. Because you are now one together with Christ. Do you get what I'm talking about? Are you with me? Yeah. Alright? The world says, by his stripes, I am healed. Alright? So I don't need to pay for my healing. I don't need to impress God for my healing. Healing is a gift. So I believe the word of God. So you need to know the truth. That's what I'm talking about. Alright? Now, you cannot experience in everyday life the victory that is just in Christ if you do not know what the word says about you. And not only knowing, because that's why we come to church, to know the truth. Do you get what I'm talking about? To know spiritual truth, spiritual reality, who we are now in Christ, what do we have now in Christ, what are the things that are true about us in Christ. But now, pay attention, not only must you know, but you must live by them. You must esteem them above every other opinion, alright? So if somebody look at you and say you are not beautiful, alright? Now, you don't go back home and start weeping and crying. Now, that means you don't believe the word. You don't esteem the word of God. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. The Bible says when God made you look at it and say you are very good. So if somebody says you are not very good, then you tell the person your opinion does not count. Are you with me? Because I esteem God's opinion above any man's opinion. The Bible says let God be true. Every man a liar. So in your situation, your circumstance, he says something to you, then you check what does God say to me in that this situation. So what do you do? You believe what God says. That is how you experience in everyday life the victory that is just in Christ. Now, you won't experience it if you see, cherish and esteem and, and lift high and prize other people's views and opinions above God's world. That's the problem with many Christians. What somebody says, what the doctor says, all right? Now, that is their highest opinion. No, you won't enjoy what is yours in Christ like that. Now, it takes you taking the word of God as your final authority. Are you with me? In every situation. Right? So, anyone that says anything contrary to the word of God, I regard them as, as a liar. I don't go with them. I believe what God says about me. Not what I feel in my body. Are you with me? Not what my bank account is saying. Not what you said to me, but what God has said. That is the lifestyle of overcomer. Overcomer live by the world. Overcomer believe the word of God. Overcomer takes the word of God as their final authority. Alright? Now, we talk about that, but this morning, now, very briefly, now, I want you to look at another lifestyle of overcomer. Now, listen to this. Overcomer don't just live by the world, they live by the Spirit of God. Let's not say by the Spirit of God. So what we are looking at today is how you now, now listen to me, can begin to walk in the Spirit or live by the Spirit. Because that is the way to enjoy and experience the victory that is yours in Christ in everyday life. So, number one, we said you have to live by the word of God, but now I'm saying you also need to live by the Spirit. So, to have an experience in everyday life, whether it has to do with my health, whether it has to do with my relationship, whether it has to do with my finances, with my career, with whatever happens to me, how do I experience the victory? How does that victory that Christ says I have become a personal reality and experience in my life? It is living by the word and living by the Spirit of God. And that's what we're going to look at, alright? So, we are focusing on you uh, developing or cultivating the habit of walking in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, or living by the Spirit, alright? Now, pay attention now. So, I'm talking about this lifestyle now. 
I want you to develop, I want you to cultivate the habits, the lifestyle of walking in the Holy Spirit and living by the Holy Spirit, all right? Now, three things we're going to look at and then we, uh, we pray. Just three uh, basic things. Number one, uh, what does it mean to walk in the Spirit or to live by the Spirit? What does that imply? What does that mean? Three things and we'll look at it. And then we pray. Number one, it means you being conscious of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're looking at, now, now pay attention, this is what I'm saying, that you need to develop the lifestyle of an overcomer. All right, and we say, number one, you need to start living by the word, on the word of God. And number two, I say, you need to start living by the spirit or walking in the spirit. You need to develop that habit, all right? Now, so as I said, walking in the spirit or living by the spirit implies three basic things. Number one, it implies you being conscious of the abiding, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is important. There are many Christians, now listen to it, who... Most time forget that God lives in them. Amen. Who most time forget that they have the Holy Spirit? Amen. You can't have victory in your daily life like that. Amen. There are many Christians, pay attention to this, that see go from one place to the other looking for God. There are many people that fall into wrongs huh? and somebody take your money, take you somewhere and do some rituals for you, bait you by the river, ask you to burn candles and rituals and give you something to hide in your house or your bed because you are looking for God or for a miracle. You have forgotten something that God is not lost. God dwells in you by his spirit. That's what I'm talking about. If you're going to experience a daily victory, if victory is going to be your reality every day of your life, you must never forget. You must have the consciousness of the presence of God in you, with you always. All right? I'm still going to dwell more on that, but that's number one. That's what it means to walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit means I'm conscious always that God is in me. I'm conscious always that I don't need to look for God anywhere. God dwells with me. God dwells in me by His Spirit. Number two, now, walking in the Spirit also implies not just consciousness of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, but you being responsive or receptive to the Holy Spirit, all right? Now, there are many of us, when we are saying, oh God, uh, I just need God, I just need God to speak to me, all right? Now, listen to this, but we are forgetting something that we just need to be sensitive and receptive to God. God speak to you from within. There are many Christians that run all over the place and line up before a prophet and say, I just need somebody, I just need a prophet, I just need somebody to speak to me. What is wrong with you? God dwells in you by His Spirit. He can speak to you from within. So you need to be sensitive and receptive to it. That is what it means to live by the Spirit. And do you know something? When you let the Spirit lead and guide you, you will experience victory always, always. Because that is what God has planned for you. Did you get it? Alright, number three now. Those are the things we're going to look at. Uh, number three. Now, not just be conscious of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in you, and not just you being responsive or sensitive or receptive to the Holy Spirit. Now, you also need to learn to depend on the Holy Spirit. So, dependence on the Holy Spirit. You need to learn how to uh, appropriate and use the power of the Holy Spirit that is available to you. There are many Christians that are find themselves at Addicted to things, and you know what? They are struggling to break that habit in their own strength and power. They are trying to use their willpower. What is wrong with you? You have God's power in you. The Holy Spirit makes God's power available to all, and so you need to use the power of God, not just your willpower. Do you know what I'm talking about? So that's what we're talking about, and uh, we just look at them uh, deeply, very closely, all right? So three things we're looking at uh, as working in the Spirit. Uh, number one is the consciousness of the presence of God which you always consciousness of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and their responsiveness or sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and dependence on the Holy Spirit. These are the three things that it really means to work 
walk in the spirit. And if you want to always enjoy and experience victory in every day of your life, it doesn't matter the battle, the situation, it doesn't matter what powers or what demons or what enemies line up against you, you want to have a reality of victory, experience the victory always, these three things are important. You need to develop the habit, you need to cultivate the habit, all right? So let's look at them one after the other very closely. Number one, the consciousness of abiding the presence of the Holy Spirit. Please turn with me to the book of John chapter 14. Now, we are looking at the lifestyle of overcomer. And we are saying you need to develop the habit of walking in the Spirit, or walking by the Spirit. Being conscious of the Spirit of God dwelling in you, and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and also depending on His power, on His ability. John 16, uh, John 14, sorry, 16, 17, 18. Now, this is Jesus who was about to leave, and then he, uh, he looked at His disciple and He said to them, I will pray the Father. Now, he will give you another helper, another comforter. He's referring to the Holy Spirit that he may abide with you forever. Let someone say forever. forever. <laughs> That's so important. Let someone say forever. forever. Now, there are many people that think that the Holy Spirit only dwell in you and stay with you when you are really good, all right? When you are living a holy life and keeping all, all the commandments of God. And the moment you sleep into sin, the moment you make mistakes, the moment you fall into an error, the moment you do something bad, then the Holy Spirit move out and step aside. That is not true. That is not what Jesus promised. Jesus did not say, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, a helper, a comforter, that will abide with you when you are good, that will abide with you when you are righteous, that will abide with you when you are doing everything right. No, he said he's going to abide with you forever. No condition attack. Do you get it? So in your weak days, are you with me? In the time when you fall into peace, and then you fall into sin, and then you are beating yourself, say, how could I have done this? The Holy Spirit remains inside of you. Amen. Because he's the one that is going to help you out of that. Amen. So he can't leave you. He can't. He cannot forsake you. So he abides with you forever. Now listen to this. So as an overcomer, you need to have that assurance. You need to have that consciousness. Are you with me? That even when you have your back on the floor, then you need to tell yourself, God is still with me. The Holy Spirit is in me and I have the power to get up. I'm going to get up. I'm going to rise up. That is when you can look at the enemy and say, don't rejoice over me, my enemy. Because even when I fall, I'm going to rise up again. Because you have God still with you. Because he has said he will not leave you, nor forsake you. That is what overcomers know. Amen. That is the only way you can always have the victory that Christ has promised you. Amen. Knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you forever. Verse 17. He said, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him, nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be in you. Alright? I love that. Not only is he with you, he actually dwells in you. Let's say, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is with me. He dwells in me. me. Alright? So that means, even when you are not in church, God is still in you. Even when you are alone and you look around and your brothers and sisters and no one is there to pray with you, no one is there to strengthen you, no one is there to encourage you, don't give up, alright? God the Almighty by His Spirit say, I'm not just only going to be with you, I will dwell in you. Yeah. Are you with me? So wherever you go, you carry Him with you. Did you get it? In the valley, on the mountain, is right inside of you. Alright? That is important. So, now, as overcomer, you need to know that, you need to believe that. Don't let anyone, don't let any devil take that truth away from you. I have God always with me. I have God always in me. Do you get it? Amen. So when someone says, oh, God is there, God is there, you say, no, I don't need to go out there and look for God. God was in me. Do you get it? Now, so you are the temple of God. That's what I'm talking about. Now, you need to drive that. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and preach it to yourself. God dwells in you. You have the Holy Spirit and it's with you forever. Till the day you leave this world, it will remain in you. 
they, they get what I'm talking about. And do you know what that means? It means you have strength always with you. You have God's power always with you. You have God's favor with you because God is in you. So you are the temple of God. Let somebody say it. I am the temple of God. You need to be fully persuaded, persuaded that you are God mobile house. Wherever I go, that is where God goes. Do you get what I'm talking about? Wherever I stay, that's where God stays. Anyone looking for God, they don't need to go anywhere. Let them find me. God is inside of me. So you need to be fully convinced about this truth. You need to be fully persuaded. Now look at First John chapter 4 verse 13. First John chapter 4 verse 13. You need to recognize that. Overcomers recognize this. Overcomer believe that. All right? That God is always with them. He's always in them. First John to the 4 verse 13. He said, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us. He's talking about God. How do we know that God, that we abide in God and that God abides in us because he has given us what? Of his spirit. Of his spirit. So, you abide in God, God abide in you because He has given you His Spirit. First Corinthians 3 16 says, Do you not know? Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Spirit of God do what? Dwells in you. Let somebody say the Spirit of God dwells in me. The Spirit of God. So why why should you be afraid of demons, alright? Why would you say, I can't sleep alone because something is coming? What are you talking about? The spirit of the almighty God, who has all the power, dwells in you. Even when you are asleep, you are still a traitor to the devil. There's no demon that will arouse you if you believe what God says in his word about you. That his spirit dwells in you. Are you with me? So that's why I could say, even when I forget to pray to sleep, I'm still not afraid of anything. There's still no demon that can come near me. Do you know why? Because the Spirit of God dwells in me. And he that dwells in me neither sleep nor slumber. There's no devil. So even when you are sleeping, no devil can still oppress you or afflict you. There's no devil that can tamper with your life. And you need to understand it. That is how you can enjoy the victory that Christ has won for you in your daily life. You need to know this in your mind. Do you get what I'm talking about? That whether I'm asleep or I'm awake, God is with me. And because God dwells in me, there is no demon, there is no unclean spirit that can tamper with my life, alright? 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Paul asks the same question. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Who you are from God? And you are not your own. Now listen to it, listen to it. Do you know that the Old Testament are saints? They understood what it means for God to be with someone. Do you get it? But many of us, we don't really understand the significance, the importance of God's presence with us. Now, if you know what it means to have God's presence with you, you will lose all your fears in life. Do you know why you are afraid? Because you don't really know. Even though you read in the Bible, you don't really believe it. That God is always with you. That God's presence is always with you. Now, look at 2 Kings chapter 6, the book of 2 Kings uh, 14 to 17. There's an incident that happened here. I just wanted to see what it really means when God's presence is with you. The Old Testament believer, they knew it. That when God is with a man, it doesn't matter how many enemies, how many enemies line up against that person, they will not prevail. They will not prevail. But many of us are still afraid. You have a dream, a bad dream, and then you lose your sleep, and then you run up and down, what is wrong with you? God is with you. God, if that dream is negative, just cancel it, alright? I said, this is not my portion because God is with me. No evil come near me, no plague come near my dwelling place. Now, Second King chapter 6, now, that's the story of Elisha, alright, and his servant, alright? And uh, the Bible said that the, the, the Syrians, I mean, uh, men with horses and chariots from verse 14. Now, the Syria king sent horses and chariots and a great army, and they came by night they surrounded the city, alright? And they surrounded the man of God, Elisha and his servant. And when his servant woke up in the morning, verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army. Let's say an army. an army. So that's not one, not two, not three, not ten, not hundred people. Surrounded the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, I lost my master. What shall we do? We are in trouble. We are surrounded. We are him below. They are more than us. Alright? But look at what he said to him. He said, do 
not fear, do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So what are you talking about? Because Elisha knew that God is always with him. And you know what? When God is always with you, the hosts of heaven are on your side. When God is, because wherever God goes, the hosts of heaven follow him. His angels follow him. Do you understand what that? So when God is with me, when God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, do you know what that means? It means uncountable numbers of angels, they are by my side. They are my disposal. They are for me. Why will I be afraid of a voodoo man? Why will I be afraid of an obia man? Why will I be afraid of any witch? Why will I lose my sleep over anyone that's threatening me? No, it's because you do not know the value of God's presence with you. And Elisha prayed that the Lord will open the eyes of this young man. And when the Lord opened his eyes, verse 17, the Bible said the young man saw, and what did he see? The mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Do you know what? If God can do that for a saint under the old covenant, how much more for a believer, a new creation under a new covenant that the Bible calls a better covenant. Wherever you go, you have the host of heaven, chariot of fire, and all is surround you. It doesn't matter how many people come against you, those who are with you, those who are for you, they are more. That's what I'm saying, they are more. Not only more in number, they are greater in power and in strength. That is what it means. And do you know what? When you have that, when you know that, you will not be afraid. When you have that, you will rebook anything that comes against you and say, you may think I'm alone, you may think because I'm not in the church, I am not alone. Those who are with me, they are more, they are more than all the hosts of hell put together. That is how you can enjoy the victory that is yours in Christ. Knowing this truth, that God's presence is with you and that God's spirit dwells in you and that means you are never alone. Are you with me? In your home, when there is total darkness around you, you are not alone. The host of heaven surrounds you because wherever God goes, the host of heaven goes there. And God is always with you. He's always with you. Do you get that? Do you believe that? All right. That is what it means. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 31. Anyone that rises against you, they will fall for your sake. They will fall for your sake. That's what it means to walk in the spirit. It means to be conscious of that Amen. truth. That look, enemy, don't mess with me. You think I'm alone? I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Amen. Those who are with me, they are much more Amen. than those who are against Number two, now pay attention. Now to walk in the spirit also means responsiveness or sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to know that I have God, I have God's spirit lives in me. It's another thing to be sensitive to God. Amen. You understand? Amen. To be receptive to God. This is important. So, now, if you want to always enjoy and experience the victory that is yours in Christ, then you need to be sensitive to the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Holy Spirit. There is no day that God is not speaking to his children. And if you are one of those children, God speaks to you every day. When you think you are confused and you don't know which way to follow, God is speaking to you. But you know something? You are not paying attention. You are not being sensitive to God's voice. So you have God's spirit. You don't need a prophet to tell you either to go to the right or to the left. God dwells in you. Alright? Every child of God has the ability to hear and recognize the voice of God. You need to train yourself to do that. Do you get what I'm talking about? So overcomers are people that seek for, that follow, that obey the leading of the Holy Spirit in every aspect of their life. Are you paying attention to me? Alright? Now I wanted to see the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8. Romans Romans chapter 8, quickly, 12 to 14. Romans 8. Now look at what Paul says here. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, all right, to live according to the flesh. You don't let your senses uh, guide you. Do you get it? Now, don't be like your unbeliever, don't have the Holy Spirit, all right? So they only rely on their natural senses, they only rely on uh, 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 the observations and all that, but you have. 
A better advantage, you have God's spirit. God who knows all things. He can lead you. He can guide you. He can direct you. You don't have to try and uh, make errors and then learn from your mistake. No. Why not avoid before? Why fall into it in the first instance? When you have God in you, who can lead and guide you at all times? Do you get what I'm talking about? There are many people that have caused themselves a lot of heartaches that they could have prevented, that, they, that, that is avoidable. Do you know why? Because they only rely on their senses. Do you know what I oh, that guy is good, that guy is tall, that guy is handsome, that guy is rich, that guy is good for me, all right? But you're only judging by the natural circumstances. You're only judging by what you see. And you listen to what I'm talking about. What is the heart of the man? Do you know it? But God, who knows the heart of man, listen to you by his spirit, let him speak to you, let him guide you, let him lead you. That's what we are talking about. That's how to enjoy the life that God has planned for you. Do you get what I'm talking about? It's not everything that glitter that is gold. Are you with me? It's not every open door that actually leads to joy and sources and breakthrough. Let God lead you. Be sensitive to his leading. Now, so the Bible says, Romans 8 verse 13, now, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If all you do is just to uh, uh, lean on the flesh and your natural senses, <laughs> death becomes unavoidable. But if you, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Do we have sons and daughters of God? Then you are to be led by God's Spirit. Now, so what does it mean to be led by God? What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? So, as a child of God, as a believer, a son and a daughter of God, God wants to lead you by His Spirit. Are you with me? One of the reasons why God has come to dwell in all by the Holy Spirit is so that He can lead you and guide you. So that you can avoid making those terrible, deadly mistakes. So that you can avoid falling into the pit. Do you get what I'm talking about? So that you can, you may avoid falling into the trap that the enemy set for you. Alright? But you need to be sensitive to that. You need to pay attention to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks quietly to you, when the Holy Spirit gives you a witness and impression in your heart, you need to know it. You need to know it. You need to train yourself uh, to look within, to listen within. Do you get what I'm talking about? And not just look uh, all over the place for guidance. No. You have a right to be led by God's Spirit. So listen within. There's a gentle voice of the Holy Spirit that is always speaking to you to lead and to guide you. To direct you. Pay attention to that and you will avoid making costly mistakes in life. Amen. Look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. I read from Amplified, Amplified uh, Version. Look at what it says. But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. Then he explained what that means. Responsive to and control and guided by the Spirit. That's what I'm talking about. That is how to enjoy victory in everyday life. You have to be responsive to the Holy Spirit, be controlled by the Holy Spirit, and be guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh of human nature without God. The same Galatians 5.16, good news translation. Look at how he put it. What I say is this, let the Spirit direct your life. Help me preach it to somebody. Say, let the Spirit, let the Spirit direct your life. Not your senses. Are you with me? Not your friend. Oh, my friend say it is good. Oh, your friend doesn't know much more. Your, 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 are you with me? <laughs> no. There's a God that knows better than your friend. Let him direct you. Let him direct you. Yeah. Let the Spirit direct your life and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. Amen. Montgomery New Testament translation. Look at how he put it. He said, this is my meaning. Let your steps be guided by the Spirit. Let someone say, let your steps be guided by the Spirit. That's, now that is what it means to walk in the Spirit. That is how overcomer lives. Overcomer. Those who enjoy victory all the days of their life 
and there are people that allow the spirit to guide their step. Do you get what I'm talking about? Not their senses, not their feelings, not people's opinion, all right? But the spirit of God. And of course, when the spirit leads and guides you, it leads and guides you in harmony with the written word of God. The Holy Spirit will never speak to you contrary to what is written. Now pay attention. So when a voice speaks to me, and it is contrary to what is already written in the word of God, what Jesus has taught, what the yearly apostle has taught, then I know that is not the voice of God. I know that is not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit always lead in conformity with the word of God. Now look at New Living Translation. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? To live by the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. Since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit leading in every part of our life. Let's not say every part of my life. Now, now, some people think, well, it is only when it is time to make a major decision. That is when I need to know what God is saying. No, in every part of your life, every step of the way, are you with me? Major or minor, do you get it? Not only when you want to get married, no. In choice of career, what to do. Are you with me? Every day of your life, let the Spirit of God lead in every part of your life. That is what it means to walk in the Spirit. Now, the last thing before we pray, dependence on the Holy Spirit. Dependence upon the Holy Spirit. So, walking in the Spirit implies you depending upon the Holy Spirit. That is the lifestyle of overcomers. Now, listen to this. Overcomers, those who enjoy in every day like the victory that Christ has won for them are people that don't rely on their strength. They are people that don't rely only on their natural ability, on their prowess, on their skill. But those who rely on the Holy Spirit, the ability, supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. I want you to know that God dwells in you in his fullness. So when I say, Lord Jesus, I believe and I confess as my Lord and Savior. Now Jesus comes to live in me by his spirit, all right? So the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Now pay attention. He comes to live in me in his fullness, with his power. Are you with me? So when the Holy Spirit comes in me, he comes with supernatural ability. He comes with giftings. He comes with his anointing. He comes with his grace. Now so I have everything it takes to live a triumphant life, an overcoming life, a successful life, a prosperous life within me already. Do you know what I'm talking about? There are many Christians that still think there's something missing in their life and so they go so many places and then they say you have to sow some special seed, you have to pay some a special offering so that you can get a special anointing. There is nothing like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? When God comes to dwell in you, everything you need to live the life that God planned for you is now available to you. Amen. Now, when Jesus, when the Spirit of God comes to live in you, what anointing are you looking for? No, that is the source. Are you with me? He's the one that has everything. And it's not as if uh, the Holy Spirit comes to live in me and then he leaves his power, he never know. He comes in his fullness. That's what the Bible says. Look at Colossians chapter 2. That's why the Bible says you are complete in him. Are you with me? It means the fullness of God dwells in you. All right? If you are a child of God, if you are a believer, if you are born again, if you are a new creation, you have all the anointing that you will ever need. You have all the power, all the grace. Everything that God has for you is now in you, in your spirit. All it takes is to draw them out. All it takes is to appropriate them and begin to maximize them and use them. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter, and that is what walking in the spirit is. Walking in the spirit is you drawing from the supernatural ability that is in you. And say, Lord, this situation in my own strength. In my own wisdom, I come to the end of my natural wisdom. My skill enough cannot deal with this. My ability, my strength, my willpower cannot overcome it. But I know that I have your power within me. Are you with me? I know I have your wisdom within me. And I'm going to make use of that. I'm going to deal with this in the power of God. That is the way to enjoy the victory. Are you with me? Colossians chapter 2, 9 and 10. Now, I wanted to enjoy it in Amplified Classic Edition. 
Look at what it says, verse 9. For in him that is in Christ, the whole fullness of deity, that is the God there, continue to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. Alright? So what the Bible is saying that when Jesus Christ was on earth, now listen to me. Now, the same spirit of God that dwells in us was also the same spirit that dwells in Christ. Are you with me? And the Bible says it means the fullness of God dwells in him. All right, now, and look at what the Bible says now, verse 10 now, and you, let's not say you now. Now, it's talking about us now, you as a believer, and you are in him, you are in Christ, you are made full, and having come to fullness of life, in Christ, now pay attention to how Amplified put it, in Christ, you too, you are filled with what? The Godhead. So everything that Christ was filled with, when he was on earth, the Bible says, you now in Christ, you are filled with what? The Godhead. Father, Son, and what? Holy Spirit. Let's not say, I'm filled. I'm filled. I wanted to say, we come to say, I am filled. filled. We call the Father, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dwell in me. That's what he's talking about. Don't let anybody tell you you are lacking something. Nothing is lacking in your spirit. Are you with me? Now, what else do you want? The God else. That's what the scripture says. That's why I say you need to believe it. Oh, I feel so empty, all right? Now, your feelings are not reliable. Don't rely on it. All right? The word of God says you are full with God. Else. You are full with the fullness of God. When your feelings say, I'm just empty, say, no, I am not empty. I may feel empty, but that is not true. I am full of the God. Else. I'm full of the power of God. And he said, you have reached full stature. And he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principalities and power. Permit me to read this scripture in uh, the 21st century New Testament. Now, I love that translation. Look at the way he put it. For in Christ the God held, in all his fullness dwells incarnate. Verse 10, uh, and by your union with him, that is with Christ. All right? When we are born again, we are joined together with Christ. So we are united with Christ. So the Bible says, by our union with him, by my union with Christ, by your union with Christ, look at what it says. You also, you are filled with it. Filled with what? Everything that Christ was filled with. The fullness of God. You are filled with it. He is the head of all archangels and powers of heaven. So you are full of God's wisdom. You are full of God's grace. You are full of God's anointing. You are full of God's power. Amen. Are you with me? So everything that Christ had that made him live and overcome it, triumphant and prosperous life, everything that Christ possessed that made him fulfill his calling, fulfill his ministry, fulfill his destiny, the Bible says, you also, you are full with the same thing. You are filled with the same thing. Do you believe what God says about you? Now, forget about what somebody else says, what your feeling or your emotions say. What God says about you, that is the truth. That is the truth. And do you know how that helps? So, when I'm faced with any challenge or situation, when I'm faced with any demons or demonic power, and I know what God has said, I am full with the fullness of God. I'm full with the power of God. Now, I won't run away from that spirit, from that situation. Are you with me? I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to face it. Do you know why? Because I know I have what it takes to overcome it. I know I have what it takes to subdue it. It doesn't matter any sickness that comes against me. I have the evil power of God in me. I have what it it takes to prevail. It doesn't matter any demonic power. I have what it takes to prevail to some you over. That's what we are talking about. Amen. That's the lifestyle of overcomer. Overcomer lead by the truth of God's word. Let me read a few more scriptures, then we pray. Now, look at Micah. Micah was one of the old prophets. Now, under the old covenant, all right, look at what he said. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. You need to see this. He said, but truly. Let's say truly. truly. <laughs> now, look at what Micah said. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Can you imagine that? That's an Old Testament prophet. He said, truly, I am full of power. I want someone to say, truly. 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 Right, you truly didn't sound like my ass old. Let's not say truly. Truly. I am full of power. By the Spirit of the Lord. So when you have the Holy Spirit, what you have is power. And it is not a little bit, 
you are full with it, filled to the brim, filled to the capacity. Don't see yourself as powerless. Don't speak as one that is powerless. Are you with me? Don't see yourself that like, well, I need to get a man of God who has the power. What are you talking about? The same power in the man of God, that is the same power in you because it is the same spirit. I am full of power. Power to overcome whatever comes against me. Power to prevail over any demon. Jesus said, Look, and I tell you, I give unto you authority. I give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy. You can turn upon serpent and stop you. Anything that comes against you, you have power. And you know what? The power is the power from above. The power is God's power. So there is nothing that has ever come against you, that will ever come against you, that you cannot subdue, that you cannot prevail. So the way to overcome a thing is that when there's a challenge, when there's a situation, they don't surrender, they don't go into depression, they don't go down, they don't start weeping, they don't run elder and scatter looking for, for somebody to that has special power. They see themselves full of God's power and they rise up and deal with the situation. So every challenge, every situation is an opportunity for you to express who you are. You are an overcomer in Christ. You are full of God's power. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Now, nah, don't sit down in the door. Yes. You have your back on the door. Rise up. Yes. You are full of power. You are not weak. You are powerful. Yes. You are powerful. Yes. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let anybody talk you down. You are not made to be down. You are full of power. You are full of power. You are full of power. Rise up. Deal with that situation. There is no habit you cannot break. You are full of power to break it. Amen. So don't rely on your willpower. You have a power greater than your willpower. Don't rely on your muscles and strength. God's power is in you and it's greater than your muscles and strength. Make a demand on God's power. Amen. Face the situation with God's power. I say in the name of Jesus, I face this situation with God's power. In the name of Jesus, I subdue this situation. I subdue this power with God's power. Amen. That is the way overcome and live. That is how you can experience the victory. Now listen to me. When you see yourself as a weak person, as a weakling, as a victim, as one without power, you will not enjoy the victory that is not Amen. Amen. People will just be pushing you here and there. People will just take your money and promise you a special anointing, a special power. Because they know you don't know the truth. Amen. What God has said about Amen. you. Jesus. You are full of power. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and the Holy Spirit has come and so that means you have received power. Let them say, I have received power. Are you sure of that? Say, I have received power. And you will use that power. Let's go through the scripture. Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians 3 20. You are full of power and it is time to make use of that power. It is time to deal with life challenges in the power of God, not in your own strength anymore. Are you with me? In the strength of God, in the strength of God. It is time to deal with that. Ephesians 3 verse 20. I want to close with this scripture and then we rise up to pray. Now to him who is able, that is God, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let's not say God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I may ask or think. But that's not full stop. What you have there is cover. That means that is an half truth. Many people that's the only scripture they go. Oh, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he has or thing. Full stop. But that is an incomplete truth. Amen. Now, pay attention now. He said, come on. Come on means you may pause, but don't stop. All right? Amen. That's what that scripture says. That's what that part. So Paul is saying, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you may have something. Oh, I need, I just need healing. God is able to do much more than that. He can heal you and keep you strong to the end of your life. Are you with me? Oh, I just need victory. He can give you victory again and again and again. But listen to how God does it now. And then we pray. So thank God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what we ask of thing. But listen to the next. He said, according. Let's not say according. According. So according to the power that works in us. So he said, what God will do in my life, 
is according to the power of God that works. Amen. Now, the word according, there's a Greek word that is called kata. Now, kata means it means true, bad. It means God will do what God will do in my life. The manifestation, the glory, the miracle that I'm going to see in my life is true or by the power of God that works in me. Now, pay attention as we close. Now, I don't want you to miss this. All right? I need you to get this and then we rise up to pray. Now, pay attention. Now, the word power in Greek is dunamis. It means miraculous power. In this bar, it means inherent power, it means ability. All right, now the word works here is the Greek word energy, it means to put something to use, to be active, to effectively use something. Now, those people look up now and let's wrap this up. Now, the scripture is saying if you want healing now, let's say you are sick in your body and you are struggling with sickness, and then you want healing. Of God. Alright, so the Bible says God is able to heal you. Alright, not just heal you, but keep you healthy and keep you strong. But there is a condition of that. He said, What God is going to do is according to the power of God that was in you, not in God. God has all the power, and let you know, God can do all things, much more than what we can imagine. But what God will do in a man's life is according to the power of God that that man put to use. And that's the reason why when you come to pastor and I lay my hands on you and pray for you, now listen to this, even though you have the power of God in you, the same power that I have, but because you are not using your power. So when you come and say, pastor, I think I'm sick, I think something is wrong with me, what I'm using, are you with me, is the power of God that is in me. I am putting it to use. And when I put it to use, then there will be resolved. And I'm saying to you also, you also can do the same. So you don't fold your hand, you don't cry your leg and then you wait for miracles in your life and wait for the manifesto of God. No, it comes when you use the power of God in you. Let somebody say, I have God's power in me. I want you to rise up on your feet as we close it. I have God's power in me. I want you to say that if you mean say, God's miraculous power is in me. I have supernatural power. I have supernatural power in me. Now, that is the lifestyle of overcomer. Amen. Overcomer puts God's power to use. Amen. They put it to use. How do you put God's power to you? It starts with what you say. What you say with your mouth. Sickness, you have no right in my body. Amen. By your stripes I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I curse you out. I receive my healing. That is putting God's power to use. That's putting God's power to you. And when you put God's power to use, you will see the result. You will see the miracle. Now listen to this. This is how God wants you to live. There is nothing that you need as a new creation that is not available to you in Christ. Everything that we need, God places inside of us. God lives in us and that means everything is available. Are you with me? Now one of the things you are struggling with, is there any habit you want to break? Is there any challenge that you are facing? Is there any situation, unpleasant situation? Uh, this morning, I want you to get ready to get out of it. I want you to deal with it using the power of God in your life. I want you to open your mouth. Now listen to this. Now listen to this. You don't have to put up with the devil, you know. Why do you have to put up with the devil? Christ defeated the devil for you. You don't have to put up with sickness, you know. Because Christ took your infirmity in his body. Do you get it? Now, those circles in your family, no? You are not a new creation. Now, things are supposed to be different. But listen to this. Things will not change if you don't place a demand. If you don't press for a change, you have to use God's power. Are you with me? Don't wait until somebody lay hands on you or until somebody pour an oil on you. No. Put to use God's power in you. And I want you to do that this morning and expect God's miracle in your life. Oh, Limba Zabreketeli. I want you to open your mouth. What is that that you are facing? You are going to say in the name of Jesus. With God's power today, I overcome you right now. I overcome this sinful habit. I prevail over this sickness. I subdue right now. I decree miracle right now. Miracle in my body right now. Healing in my body, in my family.
family. Financial breakthrough right now. Financial miracle right now. Yes, yes, sir. Open your mouth and begin to take a day. Open your mouth and begin to use gospel. Don't keep your mouth shut. Don't keep your mouth shut. You need to put to use the power of God. You have God's power in you. And it is time to use it. It is time to put God's power to use so that you can see the miracle. So that you can see the victory that is just in Christ. I refuse to put up with sickness. I say no to sickness in my body. No to sickness in the life of my children. No to sickness in my church. No to sickness in my home. I reboot sickness. We reject you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus, I receive all. I receive your blessings. I want you to open your mouth and declare this after me. Say in the name of Jesus, I am an overcomer in Christ. Christ's victory is my victory. I have the power of God. I have the authority of God. Over all demons, over all evil powers, over all sickness, over all the works of the devil. This morning, in the name of Jesus, I exercise my authority, my God given power over all the works of the devil in my life, in my home, in my family. I destroy you right now, in the name of Jesus. Every work of the devil. destroyed right now. Every part of the devil is broken right now. Every affliction comes to an end right now. Every oppression comes to an end right now. Every evil circle of pattern is terminated in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you for your spirit that dwells in us. Thank you for your spirit that is always in us. Oh Limbra Teboshetel Yaraba. This morning you can receive your miracle. This morning receive your miracle. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive my miracle this morning. I receive the healing this morning. I walk in victory from today. Yes, what Christ has given me, I receive it. I appropriate it. It becomes my experience in the name of Jesus. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Devil, you cannot take it away from us. We are overcomers. That is our 
our identity. That is our name. That is our destiny. We overcome. We prevail. We subdue the land. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Do you receive the word of God this morning? If you receive the word of God, can you shout hallelujah? Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org. Dot UK. Thanks for listening.